Are you gonna read that single space copy, sir? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome to the ninth uh, annual Mencken Memorial Service. Uh, before I start, I'd like to have us uh, recall the members that have uh, passed on. Uh, Harry Powell, uh, Bob Theblo, and Richard Pickens. Uh, so... Uh, Since our last get-together. Well... You mean, okay. Well, you know, o o over the years, believe. over the years. Uh, so, um, Mr. Mencken was not a believer. He was dismissive of religion in general had a Nietzschean disdain for Christianity, and was contemptuous of the strain of aggressive Protestantism which flourished in his time. Yet he had good personal relations with a number of clerics, both Catholic and Protestant, and his present day admirers are drawn from both those who believe and those who do not. A visit to a graveyard focuses our minds on certain questions which both religion and non-religion offer to answer. Rest assured that I am not here to sway the thinking of people one way or another, and tracts will not be handed out after the service. <laughs> I'm here to ask and answer, what did Mencken think and how did he deal with it? He did not believe in an afterlife, saying, it is my hope, as it is my belief, that death is the end. Life is pleasant and I have enjoyed it, but I have no yearning to clutter up the universe, a shape without a habitation or a name, after it is over. When he was asked what the meaning of human life may be, Mr. Mencken replied, I don't know. I incline to suspect that it has none. <laughs> and this point of view was re reflected in his literary reviews. He approved of Joseph Conrad's idea of the fortuitousness, the vagueness, the meaningless of, cir and cir of circumstance and life, and found merit in that to Conrad and Theodore Dreiser, the salient fact of life is its utter meaninglessness, its sordid cruelty, its mystery. He praised a modest story by Stephen Crane for its sense of brooding disaster, of cruel and immutable fate, of the eternal meaninglessness of life. In music, old Ludwig was obsessed by a sense of the inscrutable meaningless of life. From the Eroica onward, he assembled and departed from that theme. The examples can be multiplied many fold and from even the few given here, one would think that Mencken would be perpetually glum, despondent, and melancholy. Two things kept Mencken from being morose. One was his view of existence. Quote, life is an adventure to be savored and enjoyed, life here and now, in the highest imaginable, is the highest imaginable experience. What the world needs is not a cure for it, but room for it, freedom for it, innocent zest for it. The ideal man is the Nietzschean Yasager, the yes-sayer, facing destiny courageously and a bit proudly, living to the full the life that lies within his grasp in the present. Instead of embracing religion, said Mencken, a man makes it his rule to accept the world as he finds it and to work out his own salvation with a light heart. His joy is in effort, in work, in progress, a difficulty overcome, a riddle solved, an enemy vanquished, a fact proved, an error destroyed. In such things he finds the meaning of life and surcease from his sorrows. This last may explain his preternatural capacity for work. The second thing was living in America. Long quote. Here, more than anywhere else that I know of or have heard of, the daily panorama of human existence, of private and communal folly, the unending procession of governmental extortions and chicaneries, <laughs> of commercial brigandages and throat slittings, of theological buffooneries, of aesthetic ribaldries, of legal swindles and harlotries, of miscellaneous rogueries, villainies, imbecilities, grotesqueries, and extravagances, is so inordinately gross and preposterous, so perfectly brought up to the highest conceivable amperage, so steadily enriched with an almost fabulous daring and originality, that only the man who was born with a petrified diaphragm can fail to laugh himself to sleep every night and to awake every morning with all the eager, unflagging expectation of a Sunday school superintendent touring the parish peep shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The questions of faith, the afterlife, and the meaning of life have occupied some of the finest minds mankind <clears throat> has produced. They have produced a myriad arguments convincing only to those who are willing to be convinced, and this proves to me that there are no rationally attainable answers to these questions. Yet the dates, debates continue. What shall the seeker of tranquility think? George G. Nathan, Mencken's partner in the smart set, has an answer. Quote, one grows weary of the constant reiteration by novelists, critics, and such of the phrase, the meaninglessness of life. 
What do they seek in life and of it, these gloomy ones? Life, true, may be meaningless, but life is a great show nonetheless, and like all great shows, is properly, appropriately, and happily meaningless. What may uh, one ask of these dour fellows is the meaning of a circus, or the Ziegfeld Follies, or the Kentucky Derby, or of Hamlet, <laughs> or Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, or Michelangelo's ceiling in the Sistine Chapel, or of a pretty girl, or a, a bottle of Paul Roger 1911 champagne. Sometimes it is enough to just enjoy the great show. Uh, Mr. Jowis, would you please place the flowers on Mr. Mencken's grave? Memento Mori, the ancients said, remember you too shall die. Horace, the Roman poet said, nunc est bibendum, now is the time to drink, in the odes. While we are alive and able to do so, we can and must create the time to enjoy life. We now adjourn for a bit of la dolce vita, the sweet life, with our friends, both believers and not. All right, thank you for coming. Cheers. And so uh, we adjourn to Spirits West, and uh, when you uh, go out of the main gate at Loudon Park, just make a left on Wilkins Avenue and keep going for about seven tenths of a mile. It'll be on your right, uh, on, on a corner across the street from uh, St. Benedict's Church. So, so you just follow any of us that have been there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't pass Millington. That's across. Yeah, it is on Millington. It's on okay. Millington, but it's right across from the church. And uh, despite its fancy name, it's a uh, just a <laughs> down home bar, and it's Road probably the kind of uh, right bar Mencken, uh, when he was a young reporter, would hang out in. Or perhaps the crowd <laughs> there isn't as rough as the one Mencken would encounter. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.